Good morning, YouTube. I hope you're doing well. Today's lesson is just a very simple, but I think very fun and effective little Spanish guitar piece. We can call it a song. You're gonna be improvising, but I'm gonna give you a really basic and easy structure. Today's lesson is dedicated to Mr. Arthur Hall. Arthur's one of my great Patreons. He's over 90 years old, and he's still playing strong and working hard to improve his guitar playing. So this one's for you, Arthur. Thanks for the great support, and uh, here's something very, I think, fun and relaxing to play. So let me play for a second to give you the kind of vibe that we're gonna go for today, and then I will show you some ideas and some tricks. something like that. There's kind of not much going on, but there's also a lot going on at the same time because I'm gonna now show you just a really simple way of presenting guitar ideas and then you fill them in as you wish, which is why I filled it in sometimes with some fast runs and notes and stuff like that. And other times you might just do a very simple tap on the body, which is known as a golpe. Anyway. Rather than use chords, we're simply using open strings. So the open low A string was the first one just struck with the thumb even just that if you think about it that sounds pretty cool I reckon I reckon that sounds pretty cool very simple melodies now if you've been on my channel before you will have played similar things to this and that's good because we're developing a vocabulary and uh, all too often I hear people think kind of like oh, I've ticked to that box I've done some uh, Spanish guitar stuff in E I know how to do that it's like, cool, maybe you did it, but um, let's be serious, anything worthwhile musically takes many, 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 many hours of practice. So, treading over semi-familiar ground, but with a new approach or bringing in vocabulary you've learned from elsewhere is important. So here are the notes I used in that case, 0, 1, 4, 5, 7, 8, and backwards. It's a little scale fragment, you've heard me talk about those before. Point of note, I'm using two fingers, my strongest two fingers, to rest on the instrument. That is allowing my thumb to strike the low E string very comfortably, and also my, so I'm just picking with one finger, very comfortably. There's a kind of foundation there. It's like having, I don't know, a nice strong body position on the ground if you're at the gym or something like that. So I've got a foundation there. I see a lot of players play with their, their wrist is kind of, just kind of hanging here. When your wrist is kind of hanging, or even worse, because I've got my elbow touching the guitar as well. See how the guitar's really kind of nestled in there. Sometimes people, in an exaggerated situation, if your whole hand is hanging, you're using all this muscle power to hold your arm up and your precision has just gone out the window. First point of contact, elbow onto the guitar and the guitar's pushing into my body. So the instrument is quite stable already. And then I use my fingers as a point of contact. You can see my instrument, I've painted over it, but there's a wear in the paint where I do this. If you look at that so you can see I do it quite often this finger is perfectly happy here and this finger is perfectly happy here so that's just something to think about really take attention on your right hand finger position I see it all the time I see this kind of thing all the time I don't like that we like something a bit more stable the bridge is a good spot as well I'm not saying you have to do it like me I'm saying why don't you spend a minute analyzing if there's a way to improve your own positioning anyway that's how I'm doing it and we're literally just improvising. We're just making semi-random collections of those notes. And I was just occasionally tapping those two fingers, just tapping them against the guitar body. Now, I find this fun. And I can do that all day. I suggest you do it at least for an extended period of time. 
some slides. As I said, tapping with that and also tapping with the thumb. I do that a lot. I like that sound. So I can't show you every lick I know right now, but there's some ideas. And as always with my videos, there'll be a Patreon deep dive. So after I post a YouTube video, I go into Patreon and post a video that goes into more depth, more ideas, more concepts, just because I can't fit them all in on YouTube. After the E string for a while, I just struck the open A string, thumb strike. The notes I use for the A string, 0, 5, 7, 8. You can definitely expand those if you know an A minor scale, or you can, I mean, you can play whatever the hell you want. I'm just showing you my kind of vibe. So I was just playing around with that for a while. You can go back to the E. And because I'm choosing to teach this lesson mainly on the high E string, it doesn't mean you have to stay on the high E string. I deliberately finished, I'll just interject this now, I deliberately finished with a rundown to cover all the strings and a chord, just to say, hey, of course you can play on the other strings, of course you can play chords. This is just a concept. It's a blueprint, it's a, it's a source you can brainstorm off. After a bit of open A, I did D, open D string, 0, 10, 12, 13. I think I went something like that. So as well as that 10, 12, 13, I definitely hit the 15 and the 17. I will put tabs on Patreon, like I always do. And after that D minor, I came back to the E. You can cycle through. You can, I might jump back to the D now. I might try and see what a G sounds like. Let me play my open G string. There's no reason that can't work. So that's pretty fun and it goes a lot. I want to talk a little bit about timing. I'm most certainly not counting. I'm not in my head going one, two, three, four, or six. Before this lesson, I thought a little bit about how I was going to talk to you about the timing. If anything, it's closer to a six, but I'm definitely not counting. It's more about a, a pulse or a repetitive. I often call it free time. Now, almost all music that we play is in some kind of rhythm, you know, a lot of pop music and stuff's in 4-4, four, four. a lot of flamenco plays with 12s and 6s and stuff like that. Um, I call it free time when we're not counting. We're not counting, we're just listening to the sound of the guitar. And we're not trying to make the people dance. We're not expecting another instrument to be playing along so we're not setting up a groove for someone to come and bring their clarinet in or whatever. This is very much a solo guitar piece. That's not to say that you can't, of course, get a friend to come and play guitar or another instrument and weave it together. I'm just saying in terms of timing, it's what I call free time. And I find that just through practice and just through expression, just through enjoying the playing of it and kind of being in the moment of it, it forms a pulse of its own where you'll find yourself striking the strings semi-regularly, even though you're not counting how many seconds or how many beats or anything. You're just feeling the vibe. I'm gonna leave it at that for today. Thank you for watching. If you would like tabs and a deep dive, so a bit more information and get a bit, get a bit more involved with the community here, please jump over to Patreon. The link will be in the comments. But really all I hope is that you have been inspired to play some simple but effective Spanish guitar. Really enjoy yourself. Make sure each note sounds nice and clearly. Don't fudge your notes, take your time. And just have fun playing that guitar. That's what I do. I just have fun playing the guitar and I hope you do too. Thank you so, 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 so much.